Hi, I'm Nathan from Py3G and today I am going to show you how to use the I2C interface of your Raspberry Pi. We will use our BME688 breakout board as an example, but the steps that I'm going to show you should apply to any I2C compatible device. First, let's have a look on how to wire up an I2C device. I will use our BME688 breakout board as an example. The breakout board has four pins labeled 3.3 volts, SDA, SCL and ground. Put the breakout board into the breadboard so that all the pins are in one column. Then take a male to female jumper wire and connect it to the ground of the Raspberry Pi, which is the third pin on the right, and connect it to the pin labeled G and D on the breakout board. The first pin on the left is the 3.3 volts pin on the Raspberry Pi and needs to be connected to 3.3 volts on the breakout board. And then there's the two wires for the I2C interface. Right below the 3.3 volts on the Raspberry Pi is the SDA or serial data pin, which needs to be connected to the last pin of the breakout board, which is labeled SDA. And then finally, below the SDA is the serial clock pin, which needs to be connected to the SCL pin of the breakout board. And just as easy as that, you have connected your BME688 breakout board via I2C. Some boards, like our BME688 breakout board for example, have an I2C compatible header. That means you don't even need any wires to connect the board, just put it on the first six pins of your Raspberry Pi so that the board faces outwards and then you have your I2C connection ready. Now that we connected everything, we need to enable the I2C interface on our Raspberry Pi so that we can check if we connected everything correctly. Type the command sudo raspi-config and then navigate to 3 interface options and i5 I2C. Then press yes and ok to enable the I2C interface. Press escape to leave the config. After that we can type the command I2C detect minus Y1. This will print out a table of all connected I2C devices with their corresponding addresses. In our case we see the address 0x77, which is the address of the BME688 breakout board. If no addresses are shown, that means that your device is not connected properly. So now that we know that our I2C connection is fine, we can start with the programming example. I will use Python and the Blinker library by Adafruit to read the chip ID of our BME688 breakout board. We will install the Blinker library under a virtual environment so that it doesn't interfere with any other Python packages that you might have installed. First, we create the I2C example directory and change into the directory. Then we create a virtual environment named I2C. Finally, we activate the virtual environment and install the Adafruit Blinker library using the corresponding Python package manager. After that is done, we can execute the command pip3 list to confirm that the Adafruit Blinker library was successfully installed. So now it is time to program our little example. First, we need to import the sys module, the board module and the bus IO module. Then we instantiate an bus IO.I2C object and name it I2C. We provide the board.scl and board.sda to the I2C constructor. Then let's print a list of all connected I2C devices using the I2C.scan function. The default address of our BME688 breakout board is 0x77. Then we check if the breakout board was found under the connected I2C devices. If not, we can exit the program. Now we define the function that returns our BME688 ID. I will call it get BME688 ID. Inside the function, we need to use the i2c.write2 method to write the register address of the BME688 ID to the sensor. 
The register address is 0xd0 and can be found in the BME68X API on GitHub, which I will link below. We need to set the stop parameter to false so that we remain in control over the I2C bus. Then we instantiate a byte array of length 1 and call it result. We use the i2c.readfrom into method to read the value that is stored in the 0xd0 register into the result variable. And finally, we convert the byte array into an integer and print it to the console. We can see in the BME68X API that the value should be 61 in hexadecimal, which corresponds to 79 in decimal. Finally, we make sure that our get bme 688 id function is called if the script is executed, and then we can test our little script. And as you can see, yes, the correct value is printed to the console. You can use the Adafruit Blinker library to obtain other values from the sensor, but I would advise that you use our BME68X Python library, which you can find on GitHub. You can find the link in the description below, and we have a video that shows how to set up and use the library. So that wraps it up for today. Let me know if you enjoyed the video and leave a like if you did. Also subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the bell icon if you want to learn more about the Raspberry Pi.